John Bolger with Premier Guitar. I'm with Johnny A. blowing loud and proud and flying with the Yardbirds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Fun, fun stuff. Yeah, that, fun that's stuff. gotta be amazing. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's interesting because for me, the two most influential bands growing up for me would have been the Beatles and the Yardbirds. Sure. So, you know, 50 years after hearing having a rave up, <laughs> to be playing the songs for real is kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. So, of the Yardbirds, what was your favorite era? What was your favorite guitar player? Oh, Beck. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. 65, 66. Yeah. Um, you know, New York City Blues, uh, Happenings 10 Years Time Ago. I know they both played on it, but um, it was uh, really Jeff and, you know, Shapes of Things and sure. Over Under, hap you know. But you know, you, you know it's him, you know? It's you always like, know it's him, don't yeah, you? Yeah. A bastard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and for this, I'm, I've always seen you with your signature Johnny A. Gibson, which is just a, an amazing guitar, but you're telling me that you've switched to, uh, to this junior. Tell me about, uh, about that switch. Well, I've, originally I wanted to use my guitar, but, you know, as you can see, the, there's a couple fuzz boxes on here, and they don't really play well with the uh, hollow body guitars. Right. And this is a loud band. I mean, you guys yeah, are they're throwing loud. down. You know, you yeah. got a harmonica player that blasts, you got a rhythm guitar player that blasts, you got Kenny Aronson on bass. It's, yeah. it's definitely a rock band. Yeah. You know, it's not a lounge act. <laughs> yeah, <right>. um, <laughs> so I, uh, I was using a true historic 59 mm -hmm. for the first tour that Gibson sent me, and I loved it. And, but they owed me uh, another guitar, so I said, well, just build me a 57 Junior. And I took it out on the tour, and I just fell in love with the Junior for this band. You know, it's just a great, great tool for this band. Um, no nonsense guitar, one volume, one tone. It's, it's wide, kind of 50s wiring. And then I just kind of wanted to make a better mousetrap, and we've been talking about doing a, a modded Junior, which is, this is one of two that I had made, which you, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah. uh, it's kind of sculpted here. and. Sculpted here and sculpted here. Right. And um, totally ergonomic. And, yeah. And, and cr he let me hold it for a minute, and it is like yeah, this is a light shockingly one. light. This is this one's five pounds, eleven ounces. This wow. one. So yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not really a hefty guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't notice. <laughs> didn't notice. Well, that's too cool. And uh, pickup wise, just is that like a traditional just old a school stock dog? B90. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Five hundred K pots, and uh, like I said, it's wired a little bit different. Um, I get this confused, but on the '50s wiring, one of the pots has is goes to the edge end lug, and one goes to the center lug. And the way it does, it works when you have it that way. You have a nice taper on the volume and a nice taper on the tone. I wired this opposite so that the taper on the tone works differently. It stays bright between like three and a half to ten but you actually get more gain from three and a half to 10. Oh. So usually when I'm running in my rhythm, I'm down at about here, three and a half and three and a half. Yeah. Nice and clean, and then you yeah. can just bring this up. It brings in more, it brings in more level, and then if you want to just bring in your solos, and it's... That's just all lamp. That's not pedals there. That's, that's great. It's amazing how much variety you get just out of those two yeah, knobs. Yeah, it's and great. They're great up. guitars. I'm having a love affair with Juniors lately. Yeah, I get it. And it's it's amazing too that non-compensated wraparound bridge is like yeah. dead on. It's in tune. Yep. Yeah. How's that even work? It's in tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even after you wank it on that thing hard. Yeah, yeah. I like it. That's good. What, now, what gauge strings are you running on that? On this, I use tens. Yep. Uh, on the Johnny A's, I tend to uh, go heavier. Um, on my solo gig, I'm doing a solo gig, which is no band, just me and my guitars, and I'm running 12s wow. on those. But I have guitars tuned down a whole step. Okay. So I have one that's tuned to uh, D standard and one that's tuned to uh, open F with a low C. 
Wow. And it's Big. regal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. And what, what brand are you using? Uh, I use the Adario. The Adario. And what picks are you using? Johnny A. Who the fuck is? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say that necessarily. <laughs> but, uh, no, these but, are heavies. They're yeah. just Planet Wave heavies. Yeah, like heavy nice. picks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, the strings on these, for this gig I use XLs, for the other gig I use NYXLs. Yeah, okay, sure. But with sure. the balance tension on the, uh, well, because I use the Bigsby on the other gig. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. And you're just touring with this one guitar right now, right? Guitar on the back, pedal board in the bag, on the plane. Jeez. That's it. Backline two amps every night. Backline amps. That's too easy, man. And if you break a string, because you dig in pretty hard. It's the BB King thing. <laughs> Change it on stage. <laughs> Hell a joke. <laughs> Let the other boys take a long harmonica solo. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Give you a minute. I'll be there. That's great. Okay. So, um, and amp wise, as you said, you're you're just backlining. Yeah. Well, I use my amps of choice at JTM 45 usually. I'm mm -hmm. a Marshall guy, but they don't seem to work for the Yardbirds. It's just that they have that Vox. It's so Vox. As a matter yeah. of fact, when we played Tokyo. Marshall gave me two hand-wired uh, JTM 45 blues breakers to use for the gig. They just don't have the angst that really? an AC30 has. You know, angst, you know, AC30. It's like, hey, I'm in the room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you can, you, you can, can drown out a drummer with yeah, that. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> with, with the AC30. You hurt yourself with these. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. Well, that's great. And then this modest pedal board. It's very simple. Yeah, take me through it. Um, it's incredibly clean, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's like... John, I have too much time on my hands. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> a very, very um, exacting pedal board. Yeah, the board is by Temple Audio, and it's got the side panel so I can plug my jacks in the side. It's stereo board, um, exotic wah-wah. Um, now, what made you choose that exotic? Because at this point, you've probably had every, every variety of wah well, pedals. Part Really, honestly, um, it's first of all, it's a very good sounding wah wah. I like yeah. wah wah a lot. Um, I prefer my old Voxes, but uh, they're worth a lot of money now, so I don't take them out. Sure. And, and uh, this one's red, which yeah. well, <laughs> the color, red, scheme, you know, hey, color scheme alone. Um, part of it is the fact that it's 20% smaller hmm. than a, a, a you know a traditional size wah wah, and it's lighter. Oh, that's and great. Light. You know, weight has a lot to do with things these days when you're traveling. So sure, yeah. And then we're basically going into the uh, we're going into the fuzz boxes first. The way it's wired actually is it's going into this this analog man made me this uh, clone of uh, my Mark One tone bender. Ooh, yeah, you were playing that. Could you, would you mind giving us a taste oh, test of yeah. that angry thing? Gets that, you know. Right. I mean, so David Maine, um, the guys from Macari's in Solar Sound, uh, made me a prototype of a '65 uh, Mark One tone bender, and it was—it's just great. I got it at home. I love it. But I wanted to put together a small board, so I went down to uh, um, Analog Mike down in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And we took down my tone bender and we reversed engineered it, did all the measurements. He sourced out a bunch of old mullets for me. And we just spent about three or four days voicing it to try to sound and react like the Mark I uh, uh, solar sound. And it does. It sounds well, great. Well, that's great. So a, when you A, B him, which is your favorite to this day? Well, if I had my druthers, I'd probably take my, the one that David Main made me yeah. because it just, it's got a thing. It's yeah. really got a thing. But this is like 98% of what that other one is. Yeah, well, and, that's great. And the weight is, you know, it's in a, basically it's in an SL drive box, in an exotic SL drive that, box. That's amazing. And uh, let me see. Yeah, what's uh, next? What do we The other from there? fuzz box is a, a Mark IV, uh, basically a Sunbender IV that uh, Mike made me at Analog, and it's a little bit, different than the stock ones. It doesn't compress. It's really bright to get the New York City blues type of sound. The, uh... Yeah. You know, the bright kind of... Right. Uh... 
That's so dead so on. So that's, man. you know, that <laughs> trump, it almost like when I, when I used to hear those songs when Beck played, especially New York City Blues, it kind of reminded me of like a trumpet or something. It had that real bell-like trumpet sound and you can chase that thing forever. But right. uh, that's pretty close. It sounds pretty nice. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds amazing. And that. then um, it goes into a um, SL drive for just distortion occasionally, which I don't use that often. But when I do, I use that. Um, it's a nice little box. Everything, EP booster is always on, pushing the front end of the Oh, amps. sure, okay. And uh, this is a uh, Eventide H9, and I'm basically using it on one patch, which is just reverb and um, a stereo delay. The amps are in stereo. And I have a Barn 3 attachment to it that allows me to uh, access different functions of it. So, for example, here's a tap. Oh, I get my tap great. here. Yeah. Um, here's my tuner button for it. Oh, the, oh, the Tesla up yep, there the is Tesla, the tuner? Yeah, okay. it's part of that whole thing. Cool. And this is a bypass on and off. And um, this, will, this will just change my presets for me. Wow. If I change it. But I never change a preset. It's really only one preset. So it's a, an extremely humble rig. It's a pretty, you know, no nonsense. Yeah. Not no. exotic or anything. George Ells cables back. And then uh, I use the slide. I'm using these Dunlop uh, yeah, like 212s. Okay. Like pinky slides. Sure. And uh, an Ebo for like, uh, you know, hat things, you know, yeah. for. Um, That's so That's great. It. It's very simple. Yeah. Not much to it. Yeah, and, and actually, I saw one of your, um, uh, one of your signature, you didn't, um, you didn't have your, your Gibson signature here. No, I, did, I don't have the Gibson, but Paul brought over an Epiphone version. Paul, let's see that thing. Yeah, as long as you're here, why not? Yeah. So this is, so Epiphone just released your SIG as well. Yeah, they did a really fantastic job on this because, you know, as you know, the, the Gibson one is, uh, well, it's been in the line for 15 years, which right. is incredible, but it's extremely expensive. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it that... sells for a lot, a lot of money. And uh, about three years ago, uh, Epiphone and Jim Rosenberg approached me about doing this. And uh, we said, well, what do we want to try to get it out for? And, you know, like a, maybe a fourteen ninety nine list street at 1000 bucks. That's was like, great. Good luck trying to do that, but <laughs> they did it. They did a really, really nice job. It's all, uh, a couple differences on the guitar is, it is real uh, ebony though, that is ebony. Oh, that's great. They are classic 57s. Oh, those are the actual uh, classic 57s? Yeah, they oh, use a great. B70 instead of a B7 Bigsby. So it's a little, the material's a little different on the uh, B70. Yeah, but feel similar, yeah, it feels, I uh, Yeah, the construction's a little different on the inside, the way they put the neck together. Um, and it's a it's a uh, a laminate uh, top as opposed to a solid top. Yeah. And but they did a great job on the guitar. I mean, for nine hundred ninety nine bucks, it's pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Now yours has yours is a the Gibson one is a carved maple top, right? Is that the deal? Yeah, this is a yeah. press top on this yeah. one. It's a ply yeah. top. So still though, I mean, pretty pretty amazing that they were able to knock that out. At that yeah. Price, you know? And they've been doing really well with them. Yeah. Uh, they sell well, and I think it's great because there were a lot of. Um, I would get email from a lot of folks that wanted, would love to have the guitar, but just, you know, by the time they pay $6,000, they just don't have the money for it. Yeah. So it was a great thing that Epiphone did uh, to put this together and such a good job. I mean, they yeah. did a fabulous job. Yeah, it's great. I'm pretty excited. Well, hey, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining. Oh, sounds look, like we got bad tubes. <laughs> sounds, like a, sounds like your back line is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of surprise for you. Hey, man. Thank thanks. you, Jody. Hey, that yeah, was a thank pleasure. You so much. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week, we upload a brand new Rig Rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So, to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash Rig Rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.